Good evening. This is the Factor Review, a weekly analysis of Mongolia's latest political, economic, and social issues by economist and columnist Mr. Jaral Sahin. Good evening. And I'll be your host, Tikshirilt. Today's topics are uh, the state budget for next year, the issue of domestic violence in Mongolia, and uh, the situation of Russian citizens living and residing in Mongolia. So our, our first topic is uh, a very big um, a very big event that happened last week. So the budget uh, law was passed, but with a 1.4 trillion uh, MNT deficit. So last week, uh, the parliament approved the 2023 budget law, and in the state budget, the revenue is pro projected to be about 19 trillion MNT, or 34.9 percent of the GDP, and spending is estimated to be at 20.4 trillion MNT. Uh, which is 37.6% of the GDP. So that means there is going to be an, a deficit of 1.4 trillion turks. And the Minister of Finance assured that the government will take measures to keep the budget deficit at target level uh, and to stabilize the economy and maintain fiscal discipline at all levels for next year. And the government expects the economy to grow by about 5% and plans to reduce the inflation rate to single digit levels for next year. And um, the opposition party, the Democratic Party, expressed that they have opposed this, this budget law since the beginning and they pointed out that uh, even though the authorities said they would cu cut down costs, the current exp expenses have increased by 480 billion Tugrugs for next year's budget. So. Um, my very first question to you is, what does it mean for the budget to pass with a deficit? Yes, it's a, that's the core of this year budget. Mm -hmm. It is equivalent of 2.6% of the GDP, mm -hmm. which the government says is a way less than last year, mm -hmm. which is true. And now 2.6% is still very a big deficit. It's 1.4 trillion. Mm -hmm. So why this year budget was supposed to be no deficit? Two reasons. One is we have spent 15 trillion MNT for the last two years during COVID to fight COVID. It includes many uh, social care, even payment of the electricity, etc. So it's almost like a budget size separately spent. Mm -hmm. So this makes already the fiscal deficit uh, very hard already. First, secondly, we are to pay 1.3 billion USD bond money next year, mm -hmm. and it's most likely they will refinance it, the beautiful name given to pay debt with new debt. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going to happen. But however, it, whether international investors will allow us to do so or not, because still the Mongolian government is, is it uh, fiscally prudent or not? Mm -hmm. So when you go with a deficit at the time after COVID, that's very hard. So. Uh, that's why if they allow or if the conditions will be favorable, then it will be raised another bond mm -hmm. money and pay this 1.3. Otherwise, uh, the foreign currency reserve of the country is substantially now lower than a year before. Mm -hmm. And now it's around 2.6 or so per, uh, billion US dollar. Mm -hmm. And we have to pay from that then we will remain only around one billion US dollar, which is not covering for five months of our import, mm -hmm. which will immediately create new conditions for, uh, in, in a fiscal term and monetary term, that will be immediately, uh, the, the, the exchange rate is today uh, 3,400 already, mm -hmm. and it will jump up on one side. On the other side, on the, on, on the other side, uh, we were talking about the mortgage, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is also a huge deficit, creating deficit, which is on the shoulder of the central bank. Mm -hmm. uh, it is budgetary work. It's supposed to be 
in the balance of the government, which they cannot afford mm -hmm. because uh, government has already big debt. So that's the specific of this deficit, uh, the budget of this year. But I would like uh, to particularly highlight that the children, child money is around 4% of GDP. Mm. And they're planning on increasing it by, or they're planning to provide um, child money to almost 90% of households? Uh, of say? children. Of children. Uh, well, a household, uh, it, this household has to, mm, you, a family should have more than 3.5 million MNT per month income. Mm -hmm. If you're above that, you don't get the uh, money, child money. Mm -hmm. If it's lower, you will receive it. Still, it's altogether only 10% cut uh, from this 4% uh, of GDP. Mm -hmm. uh, if they cut twice, or they don't give every child, they give only the most needy family children, if they cut it twice, then we would have uh, the budget without deficit. Mm -hmm. So uh, we should understand one thing, that everything money goes as a care will, will bring more debt to Mongolia. Mm -hmm. So now the question is, can we afford borrowing you in US dollar money mm -hmm. and just giving for food? Instead, I'm not against taking care of the children. Mm -hmm. But I'm against uh, the, this money goes to children uh, which no not need that money. So the, the country should be very specific on that. Mm -hmm. The real take care of children, taking care of children is uh, bigger investment in education, mm -hmm. better teacher training, mm -hmm. uh, better classrooms, more schools, close to home, these kind of things. I would rather do with the money rather giving just for food. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the um, revenue for next year. So coal exports account for one quarter of our revenue for next year. We, the estimation is that it is going to account for 25 percent. And um, coal export is pro projected to be at 36.5 million tons and on estimation 2.5 trillion tugrugs will be collected from mineral royalties, and one trillion turus will be uh, collected from corporate income tax. So they're counting, they're very dependent on uh, coal exports. So do you think that um, this, these projections are accurate? And one third of our budget revenue comes from mining sector, mm -hmm. which includes mostly two minerals, copper and coal. Mm -hmm. uh, both almost the same level. Uh, the 36 million tons of uh, coal is, uh, is possible if there is no uh, Chinese border closure again, uh, there is uh, logistics working well, mm -hmm. then 36 is okay. But this year now only 20 plus million tons. Mm -hmm. Plus we have a problem as we discuss now in all country is about this uh, misuse uh, of the coal resources by people uh, closely connected with, uh, co politically closely connected people. Mm -hmm. So uh, suppose 36 tons, million tons will be sold, but about the copper, about the same size revenue it brings mm -hmm. and a royalty, as you said. Mm -hmm. But uh, one thing is tax revenue comes as a royalty, but the other thing, that royalty goes to uh, local people where the mine are developed or produced. Mm -hmm. So these are the issues. And uh, again, we are staying dependent on mineral, mm -hmm. uh, raw materials. So it needs the part of budget to go uh, for more diversifying the economy. Mm -hmm. So that, that part, you know, in Mongolia, each minister has own portfolio of money. Mm -hmm. And it's important thing not only to spend, but what, is, what are the results, that's what the people should know. Mm -hmm. So um, another change that came within the budget, budget law for next year was the um, certain increases in 
uh, in salaries for government jobs. So they're going to make substantial increases in um, in posts in the countryside, so not in the capital city, and they're raising certain uh, they're raising salaries for certain government jobs. Um, I think it was around six percent, but it's a lot less than what the inflation percentage is now. So do you think that um, this raise is substantial enough to you know, help people's lives? Or? Well, um, we have a one million reserve of human resources, mm -hmm. out of which a quarter works for public. Mm -hmm. And the salary all around the country are lower if you compare it with inflation of 14.5 percent, this year we have reached it. And next year the government promises uh, only 8 percent, but it's almost impossible, uh, particularly if we don't increase the productivity of the whole country. Mm. Uh, for public offices, they are doing new system now, ranking, rating differently, and the public office will receive. But the problem with increase of salary for public officers are becoming always a big pressure on the private sector. Mm. More people want to go to public sector, and it is very hard for private sector to catch up that level of salary. So it creates more cost for businesses, mm. and less profit, of course, and less for investment, the reinvestment. So Increasing salary for public officer is, looks, sounds good for one part of the population, but not good for the other part of the population. Mm. So it has a two ends. Mm. Okay, let's move on to our second topic. Last week, the uh, certain law enforcement agencies in Mongolia, the UN Population Fund in Mongolia, and the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation held a conference on combat, combating uh, domestic violence in Mongolia, and at this conference there were over 800 attendees, including, including representatives from all 21 provinces and nine districts of Ulaanbaatar. And to share some statistics on domestic violence, 31.2% of women, of all women in Mongolia, experience physical or sexual intimate partner violence, meaning um, domestic violence in their lifetimes. So this is a very um, major issue here in Mongolia. And what do you think um, is the, sol or what steps should be taken to um, you know, combat this problem? Yes, there was a 735 teamwork, teams mm -hmm. working, by, uh, working for combating uh, corrupt, uh, the uh, violence domestic violence, against domestic violence, mm -hmm. combating domestic violence. Uh, yes, the, it's fifth forum, they do it. We have a, a law against uh, domestic uh, violence mm -hmm. uh, from 2004, amended in 2017, more specifically what happens if domestic violence happens, what to do. And if it's repeatedly done, then what to do? Very, very more clear. Mm -hmm. um, the, that law is in force now. And uh, as a result now, we have, for example, uh, a care center for victims of domestic uh, violence. Mm -hmm. And the statistics says also 15% uh, of all calls coming to the police related to domestic violence. Mm -hmm. It's very specific crime which is happening beyond the eyes of the other people, only those what is inside uh, they know. And uh, to prov important thing is what happened after if it happened. But the most important thing is what we can do all together that to prevent that domestic violence. And it's in the, in the mind of people. Mm. And it is not necessarily only poor people makes this violence. Rich people do too, but only the calling rate mm -hmm. after that for wealthier family less than the uh, other family. Uh, so the main issue is prevention. 
how to prevent. It's in the mind of the people. It's an issue of personal that bringing up who was in, I mean, how was he, he, that person's childhood? Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the culture, education, bringing up, all many social characteristics of people are combined, intervened together. And we need to address those only issues. Mm -hmm. And we need to address it by whole society. Not only this police, this team. We, that team is including, for example, Horo head or social worker in each horror, the, the smallest unit, administrative unit in the country. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and at this fifth forum, they discussed they need certain financing, which is uh, very miserable compared with what they do. Mm -hmm. But however, if they will start increasing, then they will be separate office, you know, all this running that office altogether, it would be triggering more, uh, more larger volumes of expenses. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, answer. Mm -hmm. So um, on the issue of the social workers, um, so the main problem is that the job is not very desirable for many people. Because it's very low paid. Mm -hmm. In the remote areas, it's very hard work. You need to walk. There's no bus stations. Mm -hmm. And in some places in Ulaanbaatar uh, city, where uh, more than half of population lives, uh, many people live in, half of them live in a remote Gir district. Mm -hmm. And in, for one social worker in some places, 5,000 families uh, belong. Mm -hmm. In some small, in, in particular center, that, that very um, high density places, uh, horror are more smaller, more fragmented. Mm -hmm. Maybe some horror and social worker uh, have only 500 families, for example. So it's a really unequal job mm -hmm. with the same equal salary, which is a very small. So that's the reason. Mm -hmm. So should we be? Um, putting more emphasis on um, cre creating this workforce or training more people to be social workers and improving the situation. So maybe by, um, as you said, uh, maybe setting like a quota for one social worker. Um, so do you think those are um, you know, possible solutions? What do you think uh, should be yeah, done in that Certainly case? the social worker salary a bit in to be increased. Mm -hmm. and more equally distributed, mm -hmm. the, the, the load of the worker. And of course, uh, the most job is to be made in the mind of everybody, each family, every man, every woman mm -hmm. in, in, in the country, where violence is not good. You should love people close to you. I mean, respect. Mm -hmm. huh? So respect each other. And it's a huge social issue. And as you said, uh, one third of women in the country mm -hmm. in their lifetime being a victim of domestic violence. It's a very high uh, number. Mm -hmm. So it's mostly we have a lot to do uh, by whole society together. It's a, it's a mindset, it's culture, and I think our art also to address these issues, mm -hmm. but uh, with the solution, it's not the bad end. So th many things in that regard to be done. And uh, at the forum, uh, w good thing is they have this forum. They discuss what is done, what is not done, what mm -hmm. is to be done. And um, now this time they bring particular issue of financing of those team of people. Uh, and the result, what they have done, that's good uh, work. And we should do it every year. And every family, every person is to think about domestic violence as a truly uh, very specific bad crime. Mm -hmm. That's the mindset we need to change. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, let's move on to our third topic for this week. Uh, so towards the end of September, we had an influx of Russian citizens coming into Mongolia. 
uh, mostly through the land border. And within a month of that time, 85% uh, of these Russians, uh, Russian citizens that had arrived in Mongolia left Mongolia, either uh, back to Russia or to a different country. So one of the so one thing that was surprising was that um, over a thousand, little over a thousand and two hundred people arrived through the Chingisang airport, but uh, more than three thousand people left through the airport. So um, we, one can see that uh, people are arriving through the land border and leaving through uh, the airports. So um, this may be due to you know the fact that Russian citizens are able to enjoy a 30-day visit to Mongolia with the possibility of an extension of another 30 days. Um, but there are, um, even though 85% had left, I think the number is even more now because this was uh, after one month. Um, there are a lot of Russian citizens that intend on staying in Mongolia. Um, 800 people have, over 800 people have extended their visas. And um, a study by the National Chamber of Commerce and Industry surveyed 426 Russian uh, nationals, and 42.1% um, of them said that they had some understanding of the Mongolian language, and 28.3 of them um, of these people surveyed planned to permanently permanently settle in Mongolia. So, do you think that you know this is? possible because we would have to approve a lot of these people for work visas or um, long-term stay visas, right? The statistics, national statistics, say that by the end of third quarter of this year, compared with the last year at the same time, uh, over 100,000 Russians came as a tourists, a visa category tourists, mm -hmm. and that those including all of what we are talking about. And I just checked it with the immigration office. 6,000 of them have extended for next 30 days mm -hmm. because uh, you know, Russian citizens can come to Mongolia without visa for 30 days mm -hmm. and they can extend once uh, another 30 days, so far 6,000 people. And 800 only people have got uh, a job mm -hmm. or any other. It's, uh, it's called uh, residence permission. Mm -hmm. And by having a job contract for six months, then they pay, uh, the employer pays a certain amount of money to immigration office for hiring a foreigner. Mm -hmm. uh, if they, in, in that case, they receive permanent permission, and only eight, eight, uh, six, 800 people got that permission. Uh, but my attention, you know, more people comes, it's good for the economy. Mm -hmm. And they spend money for renting, for food, for other things, and uh, uh, actually, but the issue is uh, the Russians are 85% are living mm -hmm. somehow. So it gives me thought, is Mongolia a good place for Russians to live? Looks like no. Mm -hmm. And we need a lot to improve. We should think over that again. How, I mean, the streets, names, to be in two languages, to be friendly, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's only in Mongolia now all around. Uh, uh, the, the all capital city, I think, except Ulaanbaatar, has uh, two signs in English and mm -hmm. in their own language, for example. It should be services. So in particular, we should pay attention more to our to neighbors, to these languages to be spoken somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, and also all the living conditions. So uh, Russia is a rich, big country compared mm -hmm. with Mongolia. Mm -hmm. So the people's demand are different. That's why they are not living in uh, Mongolia. The interesting thing is, uh, they, um, the, according to the survey you are referring to, by the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. It says that um, uh, they, they have asked the questions. Uh, so 28% said that tourism, 18% said to find a job, 12% mm -hmm. to study, 7.4% friends, 
to meet friends and families. Uh, 21% is running away from this partial mobilization mm -hmm. started since uh, the September 21. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, my this statistics uh, from the immigration offices from September 21, okay? mm -hmm. not the whole year. 6,000 people mm -hmm. uh, got the additional permission to stay, the visa to stay, and 800 found jobs and permanent res residence permission, they got it. Uh, interesting, the other thing is 75% uh, uh, of those who said that they will invest in Mongolia, mm -hmm. uh, there's a 75% in trade, trading, 12% in IT, uh, 43 percent less than 10,000 U.S. dollar, 25 percent 100 to 200,000 U.S. dollar investment planning. That's what they said. Uh, that, that, that statistic sounds interesting for me also. Mm -hmm. So I was expecting this IT a little bit more, only 12 percent of those who are going to invest. And there are 40 percent are renting apartments, mm -hmm. 39 percent uh, are staying in a hotel, for example. Mm -hmm. It's good income for a hotel, but uh, is again our hotels to be also more to meet those demands the Russian is asking. Mm -hmm. So this also brings um, um, light to a problem that we may be facing for next year because next year is declared to be, um, as the government says, the year to visit Mongolia. So um, do we need to, you know, take um, lessons from this? to maybe um, be more accommodating to visitors for next year to uh, gather more uh, revenue on tourism. So maybe like in increasing the uh, number of available rooms or, increase or improving the services of these hotels. We need to reconsider a whole hospitality industry of Mongolia. Mm -hmm. And it's not only a Lambata issue. Mm -hmm. we, relatively, we have now good roads between IMAX Mm -hmm. And then it's a place stopover, maybe every 100 kilometer or so, places where they can have a coffee, some a restroom, etc. Mm -hmm. And that, that that work is to be planned not right now, mm -hmm. so that the, the, the spring when uh, war, the, the spring comes, they uh, start the construction. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, reconsider again our system of hospitality industry, uh, ranking the, those who are providing services in particular mm -hmm. in countryside. So with all together, this kind of synchronic effort of every player, stakeholders of this industry, we need to change completely the industry and service. Thank you for uh, tuning in to De Facto Review. This has been De Facto Review, a weekly analysis of Mongolia's latest political, economic, and social issues by economist and columnist Mr. Jarasaheim. Thank you very much for watching us. See you next week.